Hi, I'm Larry Cox with DIY Road Cases. Today we're going to talk a little bit about case design and planning and getting ready for your project. As you can imagine, case designs, dimensions, and requirements will vary with every case and customer. The possibilities are almost endless. This is why we don't stock ready-made plans or kits for specific items, as the possibilities on the case design are limitless. We do, however, have recommendations and tips regarding your preparation and design phase. Obviously, you need to design cases that will fit your items. That's a given. Yet there are other factors that will govern the final design and dimensions of your case. So here are some things to consider and keep in mind as you move forward with the design phase. Will the case house one item or multiple items? And what are the dimensions and shapes of those items to be housed within your case? Will the case have partitions or compartments or possibly drawers? Do you require a hinge lid, lift off lid, maybe more than one lid or multiple lids? Do you want an interior with foam, carpet, paint, or maybe nothing at all? Will the case be large enough to require casters? Are you going to be moving the case by yourself? or will you have helpers, or the use of a forklift or a dolly, things of that nature? Will your case need to fit through a standard 36-inch doorway? Or even more important, are there smaller doorways that you are aware of that you may need to navigate on a regular basis? Are your case walls going to be made from half-inch, three-eighths, or quarter-inch? You may obviously have other considerations as well, depending on your specific needs for your case. However, this gives you the main things to consider as you move forward with your design. Now, a common question that we get here at DIY Road Cases is, can you guys recommend any case design software to help me plan my project? Here is why my answer is no. Number one, design software is not cheap ranging from $250 for, let's say, the most basic software on up to around $2,600 for the high horsepower stuff, thus defeating the whole money-saving reason that you are building cases with us in the first place. Number two, design software has a fairly complex functionality and therefore has a time-consuming learning curve. This is all fine and dandy if you're running a shop with an unending, you know, string of case designs coming through that you're fabricating and possibly using automated CNC routers, drill presses, or other computer-operated machinery. However, the case building process is not rocket science. So some colored pencils and paper will be more than adequate for planning your project, as I'm getting ready to show you. We're going to run through an example, but before we begin, uh, I want to start by saying that we always recommend our double angle corner extrusions in the building of your cases. Aside from maximum case integrity and ease of assembly, uh, the double angle corner extrusion takes away any guesswork or having to account for panel overlap during your design phase of your project. Anything associated with a traditional box style where you're going to add the single angle corner extrusion over the top of it, you have to accommodate for panel overlap. If you forget that and you get down to the assembly phase, you can run into some real problems. With our double angle corner extrusion, you simply cut your panels to the exact interior dimensions that you require, and then when you go to the assembly phase, the double angle corner extrusion's design brings all of the interior panel edges together to retain the interior dimensions that you desired from when you cut your panels. For those reasons, the following example that we're going to go over will be based on building with double angle corner extrusion. So, for our example, let's say you want to build a trunk style case for two speaker cabinets that are 27 inches high by 18 inches wide by 17 inches deep. This design will be a hinge lid trunk style case with a center divider to separate the cabinets into two compartments to prevent the cabinets from banging into one another while the case is in transit. The case will be lined with one inch of plank foam, one inch thick, and that basically sets the stage for what we're about to do here with our design example. And you can see just how easy 
a pencil and paper design process can be. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are, and now we'll need our sheets of plain white paper, a regular pencil, and some colored pencil. First over on your far left side uh, of the paper, you're going to want to make a, uh, a case panels cut list, uh, which will you will break this up into two sections. The first section being your lid assembly, which is made up of five panels. Let's go ahead and list those. And let, let's call this wood panels cut list. And now let's, let's talk about the lid assembly first. That's going to be five panels because this is a hinged lid. So lid assembly. What you'll do is you're going to list the top panel, the front and back panels, and the two side panels. So let's go ahead and list those the top panel and in parentheses put one because there's one piece for that and then your front and back panels so we'll list front back and we'll just put the parentheses in the middle because there's two so now there's a total of three then we have our two side panels So side, parentheses, two. So that's a total of five panels. One, two, three, four, five. Now you're going to do the same thing for the base assembly. For this we are going to have the bottom panel. And there's one of those. And then we're going to have the front and back panels for that. So same thing like with the top, front, back. Put the parentheses in the middle, two. And then our side panels. Parentheses, two. So that gives us a total of five panels for the base assembly. One bottom. Two pieces of the fronts and backs, two pieces of the sides. The next thing that we're going to do now is uh, we're going to insert what will represent your cut dimensions for each one of these panels. Now, what I want to show you is another drawing of a case. First thing, let me say that at this point it's very important that you understand that we need to refer to your case dimensions correctly as well as the panel dimensions in terms of their location and their direction of orientation. By this I mean that you should not refer to everything by length and width because not everything is length and width and it'll get confusing when you're talking about your dimensions. Length and width is only two um, dimensions and therefore that makes it confusing because cases are three-dimensional. So here's how case dimensions are correctly referred to. First is the width, which is your left to right, that's your width dimension. Then you have your depth dimension, which is front to back. Then you have your height dimension, which is top to bottom. These are the correct terminologies when you're referring to the dimensions of a case and the same thing holds true to the dimensions for the individual panels that make up the case. Therefore you need to refer to those panel dimensions correctly as far as their orientation in your cut list. So let's go ahead and do that. First section being your lid assembly. You are dealing with width, put a line for your empty space, and depth. That's your other dimension for your top because your top goes from left to right and then front to back. So depth and then underline that to leave that blank which we will fill in these blanks later on. Your front and back panels are W for width by height because your front and back panels of course are left to right and then top to bottom. So width and height. Then your side panels, depth, 
front to back by height up and down, which is unknown at this point. Base assembly is going to be the same thing. Your bottom width by depth, your front and back panels width by height this time, and then the sides depth by height. So now we have our panels cut list. Let's just kind of section that off. And once you get all of this calculated from our drawings that we're going to do over here, then you'll be ready to start cutting and know exactly what all of your panel dimensions are going to be. Next, with a regular pencil, same as what we've been using so far, we don't need our colored pencils yet, we're going to make a rough interior dimensional drawing as if you were looking down into the open case from above. Now, the only thing we need to concern ourselves with is your interior dimensions, whatever is going to be housed inside the case. That's the only dimension that matters. Whatever the exterior dimension ends up coming out to from having the parts put on the wood is just, it is what it is. There's, there's no changing that. So now we're only going to be dealing with our case width from left to right and our case depth from front to back. So we're just going to basically get a rectangle of our case. If our cabinets are 18 inches wide, then you know that the minimum interior case width will have to be 36 inches, 18 plus 18. So we're going to draw that first line representing the front wall of the case. So we would imagine that this is 36 inches. Now we will be changing these as we go along, so that's why it's important to use a pencil, because you'll be erasing these as we change them. So here's your first panel from left to right, your width 36 inches. That's the minimum you need for the inside of the case. Now if the cabinets are 17 inches deep, then you know that the minimum interior case depth will have to be at least that deep, 17 inches. So let's draw that next line representing the right side wall and we'll mark that 17 inches. Seventeen inches. This is also going to change and you'll see why, but these are your minimum interior dimensions that you need to start with for building your case. That's the amount of space you definitely need inside. Now that you have those two lines drawn, you can draw the other two lines to complete this particular rectangle drawing. You'll just follow your line along. So basically, you know, you're going to kind of bring your, your left side up and kind of have these meet. And this can be just a rough drawing. That's all you need to calculate this. Now you've got your rectangle. This is looking down inside the case, 36 inches wide, 17 inches deep. Those are the minimum interior dimensions that will be required at this point. If you were just going to drop your two speakers in there side by side, this is the amount of space that you would need. However, we're going to put a divider and some foam inside there. That's why I say that your actual panel dimensions are subject to change as we progress through this process. So now we will fine tune this basic drawing based on the need for the divider and that foam. So first, let's do the center divider to separate our two cabinets. For ease of math here in our example, I'm going to use one half inch thick. It's much easier math to work with as we're going along here. So with a different colored pencil, I'm going to use blue. We're going to draw a small rectangular box that will represent the center divider and let's label that a half inch thick. Once that that has happened we now need to add that half inch of width to our left to right dimension because right now our left to right dimension is 36 inches. Adding this half inch panel into the center 
is now going to change our case width to 36 and a half inches. So let's go ahead and change that to 36 and one half inches. So now we know our minimum width for our panel side to side, all of our panels widths are going to be at, at this point, 36 and a half inches. Next, we need to account for our foam. We're going to use one inch thick plank foam for this case. So with a different color pencil, I'm going to use green. We are going to draw what will represent our four pieces of foam. Let's go ahead and draw those in and label them each one inch. So from the divider to the sidewall, one inch. From the divider to the sidewall, one inch. Same thing on the other side, from the divider to the side wall, one inch. And same thing here, divider to the side wall, one inch. So now you've taken into account an inch worth of foam in the inside in the back and the front. That will add two inches of foam to the depth of our case. So what was now was once 17 inches originally now becomes 19 inches. You originally had a 17 inch panel. You're adding one inch of foam inside, another inch of foam inside, so now we need to change our depth dimension from 17 to 19. And that's real easy just to make that seven into a nine. So now, as it stands right now, our minimum panel dimensions for width, 36 and a half, and depth, front to back, 19 inches. Now, with a different color pencil, I'm going to use red. We're going to draw in what will represent your four pieces of foam from front to back. Let's go ahead and draw them. And you will label these as well, one inch. So one inch, just, uh, just put it inside the case, that's fine. One inch, if you don't have room one inch because the color matches so you're going to know what it is. And then your last piece, one inch. So now you've got those particular pieces drawn in. Now, if you count them up, one, two, three, four, that's four inches of thickness that is going to be added to your width dimension. Now that you know that, we're going to change this from 36 and a half inches to 40 and a half inches. So go ahead and erase the 36, change that to 40. And now that we have our divider in place and all of our foam sections that will line these two compartments in place, we have now determined what our width dimensions will be for all of our panels and what our depth dimensions will be for all of our panels. All we need to do now is plug those dimensions into our cut list. So wherever we see width, we're going to put in the width, 40 and a half. Wherever we see depth, 19. So let's do that. Now we're going to plug in all of our width and depth dimensions wherever there's a blank for your wood panels. So width, 40 and a half, depth, 19, width, 40 and a half, height we don't know yet, depth, 19, height we don't know yet, same thing with the base assembly, width, 40 and a half, depth, 19, width, 
40 and a half. Height we do not know yet. Depth 19. So we've determined those panel dimensions and the next task at hand will be to determine what the height of the panels will be. And once we have that, then we'll be moving on to the cutting. What I'm going to do is I will draw what will be a cutaway of a side view of the case. And our only concern here will be the height. But I'm only going to draw the bottom panel first. So let's draw that. So let's imagine we're looking at the case from the side and I've drawn in our bottom panel. Now I'm going to draw my one inch of foam which will line the bottom of the case. For this I'm going to use brown. So let's go ahead and draw that in, what would represent the piece of plank foam in the bottom. And let's label that one inch. So now we're basically assuming that we're looking at it from the side, imagine a rectangle, but right now we just have the bottom panel drawn in and the one inch of plank foam. We know that the height of the cabinet is 27 inches. So for now, let's draw what will represent the cabinet. For this, I'm going to use purple. So let's draw the cabinet. doesn't have to be perfect once again it's just dimensional we know that the cabinet is 27 inches tall so let's label that 27 inches now the next steps that we're going to use will determine how you would like your lid to fit in relation to the cabinet you have two options the easiest way would be to have a shallow lid that is just filled solid with foam so that when it's closed, the foam in the lid rests right on top of the cabinets as they sit in the base assembly of the case. So in essence, the top of the cabinets would be even with the very top edge of the base assembly once it's built. So it would be sitting completely flush with where your tongue and groove is going to be uh, on the lid closure. Your lid will be filled with foam. It will, when it closes down, this piece of foam will be pressed right against the top of the cabinet and therefore it won't move. So as you see, we have our one inch thick foam lining the perimeter of the case. The cabinet is sitting inside there. Obviously this would be a side view because we're only looking at one cabinet and then the lid filled with foam when closed traps it completely surrounded by foam. Now the other option is to have a little bit of a deeper lid with the cabinets protruding above this edge of the case of the base assembly. Let's take a look at a version like that. So for example, as you can see, your base assembly stops right here your cabinet is extending beyond that. So your lid would actually be deeper to accommodate that cabinet. And you can see that it is just lined with one inch of foam, just like the bottom half of the case, so that when the lid closes down and you know completes the lid closure, the cabinet will be trapped in a perimeter of foam, one inch all the way around it. So we're going with our shallow lid version uh, where this is going to come flush to the base of the, or the top of the base of the case. So let's go ahead and add our one inch of foam plus our 27 inches of the height of the cabinet, which gives us 28 inches. So that means that the base assembly panels height are going to be 28 inches. You're going to plug that number in for your base assembly. So let's go ahead and plug in our 28 inch dimension where there's height. So 28 inches here and 28 inches here. So this completes our cut sheet for our, our base assembly. Now you can base the height of your um, lid panels on however much foam 
you want in the lid. However, I really wouldn't go any thinner than three inches on these types of lids. Just for ease of assembly and to allow enough room for installing your corners and corner braces and the half of your latch dish that goes in here or if you use an valence spanning latch, your hook to, to go across and have your little mounting plate up here. You start going shallower than, than three inches and it, it starts to get a little bit more complicated. There are ways to do it, but for ease of our purposes here with which we're trying to describe, let's stick with three inches. So if we're going with a height of three inches, let's plug that in. Three inches on the height here for the lid assembly front and back panels, and three inches for the height on the side panels for the lid. So there you are. You go from your drawings to plugging in your dimensions, and now you've got your case designed. You've got your cut sheets for your panels, and from this drawing, you can also determine how you're gonna cut out your sections of foam. Now you're ready to cut and get to work. As you can see, this process is actually pretty simple. And again, remember, this speaker cabinet example that we went through is just one of many possibilities in designing a case. With this particular example, you could have also flipped the case upside down with your design and made it as a complete lift off top with a shallow base that the speaker cabinets would sit in. So you can see even with one case, there are multiple possibilities. Just as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the possibilities are almost endless. Now, all you need to do is take the tips and recommendations shown in our example and apply it to your particular case design. From all of us here at DIY Road Cases, Good luck and have fun as you move forward with your project.